Pankti's tutorial. In this video lecture, we will be seeing how we can use the tabular method to find out the convolution of finite duration discrete time sectors. So here I have two signals f of n and h of n which are finite duration. That means they have limited number of samples. Now I, I want to find out the convolution between f of n and h of n which I am naming as y of n. So y of n is equal to f of n convolution h of n. When we are implementing it through the tabular method, what I will do is, I will write f of n values and h of n values in a table. So when I am writing f of n, I am writing it in this direction and when I am writing h of n, I am writing it in this direction. The values of f of n that we have are 1, 2, 3 and 4. And the values of h of n that we have are 4, 3, 2, 1. So I will write 4 here, 3 here, 2 here and 1 here. Now what we need to do is, we need to multiply this f of n value with the h of n value. So when I multiply 1 with 4, this will give me 4. 1 with 3 will be 3. 1 with 2 will be 2. 1 with 1 will be 1. Next value is 2. So now I will multiply 2 with 4. This will be 8. 6, 2 with 2 will be 4, 2 with 1 will be 2. Next value will be 3 multiplied with 4 will be 12, 3 multiplied with 3, 9, 3 multiplied with 2 will be equal to 6, 3 multiplied with 1 will be 3. Next is 4, so 4 multiplied with 4 will be 16, 4 multiplied with 3 will be 12, 4 multiplied with 2 will be 8 and 4 multiplied with 1 will be 4. To find out y of n, what I need to do is, I need to now take sum of these values and this sum will be taken diagonally and we will start from here. So when I start taking the sum for y of n, y of n will be equal to, the first value that we have is 4, so it is 4. Next value is 8 plus 3, so it will be 11. Next value is 12 plus 6 plus 2, so this value will be there. 20. This value will be 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1. This value will come out to be 30. The next is 12 plus 6 plus 2. So this will be 20. Next is 8 plus 3. So this is 11. And the next value is 4. So we have 4. And this is the result that we get for y of n. Now in this y of n, we do not know where to put the arrow which will denote the value of at n is equal to 0 time instant. So let us see how that can be obtained. So to obtain the arrow, what we know is the lower limit for this function is given as the sum of lower limits of f of n and h of n. And here, the limits here are 0, 1, 2, 3. The limit which are here are 0, 1, 2, 3. So the sum of lower limit will be 0 plus 0. So this limit 0 plus 0 will be the first value which is here. So the arrow will put at 4. If in the same question for f of n we had the arrow here and for h of n we had the arrow here. Then let us try and find out what will be the arrow or where will be the arrow for y of n. So here the limits will be 0, 1, minus 1 and minus 2. And for this signal it will be 0, minus 1, 1 and 2. The lower limits will be minus 2 plus minus 1. So this will come out to be equal to minus 3. So the lower limit that will be here will be minus 3. This will be then minus 2. This will be the value at minus 1. And this will be the value at 0. So we will put the arrow at 30. And this is how we can find out how to put the arrow for a result that is obtained using tabular method of convolution. And for this also what we will have is the sum of all these values will be equal to the sum of f1 value multiplied with the sum of hn value. So this sum of all the value here is equal to 100. This is then equal to the sum of f1, fn value which is 10 multiplied with the sum of hn value which is again 10. So this is then coming out to be 100. And the other thing here is the total number of samples that will be present here will also be equal to L plus K minus 1. That means the number of samples in F of n plus the number of samples in H of n minus 1. So here we have F of n samples as 4. Number of samples in H of n are also 4 minus 1. 
one will be then equal to seven. And let's see the number of samples in y of n one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is how the table maker is used for convolution. And this thing I had I had explained to you when we were doing the convolution for finite duration discrete time signal using the maker when we were representing f of n and h of n in the form of time shifted impulse signal. The restriction with the stable maker is it can only be used when we are performing convolution of discrete time signals but the signal should be finite durated. It cannot be used when these signals are infinite duration signals. I hope this video will be helpful to you in understanding how tabular method is used for convolution. Thank you for watching it.